So in this video, I'm going to teach you all the professional secrets and how to paint. I know, I know, I know. It's like, what else can we learn? Listen, throw away the tape. I've got secrets that make you paint in half the time you're used to. So we don't need a whole lot to paint, right? You need a brush, you need a roller, a good stick, some caulking gun, a little bit of sanding action. So before you get your brush and roller out, there's a few things you got to do to get a professional result. Number one, remove all the screws and prep your surface. Number two, get all of the plates and fixtures out of the way. And you can't sidestep these steps. So first of all, remove all the plates. <laughs> I, if I had a dollar for every time I saw a plate that was painted onto the wall, I'll tell you, that is my biggest pet peeve. It only takes a couple of seconds, gives you an opportunity to identify if it's even broken, probably needs to be cleaned. There you go, now it's out of the way, okay? The thermostats, again, remove them. They're usually installed, pretty simple. There we go. Nothing to it, right? Uh -huh. A couple of set screws and the plugs in the wall. Okay, there we are. Boom, there we go. So somebody has come along and painted before. Now, if you're gonna change your color, if you don't clean this up and you leave it there, you've got to paint all over it too, just to hide the old paint color. Take the two seconds that it takes, get the stuff out of your way, all right? This is a doorbell cover, really nothing to it, except it's been painted in again. Homeowner after homeowner after homeowner. They just pop right off, people. Just compression fit. Get them out of your way. Stop painting your plastic accessories. <laughs> okay, here we go. Nothing to it. You can inspect now, make sure all the connections are clean. Okay, get rid of tape, my lord. Same with your receptacle covers. Remove them all. And just a tip, if you're concerned you're going to lose all your screws, you can put them all back where they came from. Okay, now the drywall, sorry, the vacuum covers, they're just in there with set screws. Okay, remove the screws. The secret here is this is actually wired. So it's low voltage, so don't be afraid, but you don't want to be pulling this off the wall more than a half an inch. All right, that's enough room to get your brush around. Again, let's get all the old paint off of there. All right, leave that one intact. There we go. Ready to go. Now, generally speaking, I don't remember the last time I saw a wall that was full of pictures that had nails in it and every single nail missed a stud. But look at this. <laughs> hey, we scored. Bad at a thousand. <laughs> all right, so once we got all of our wall, you know, prepped up and we're ready to paint, we have to prep our wall. <laughs> Remember, professional results, it's all in the preparation. So yes, we've removed all of our cover plates, we've got our paint here, but we have to fill our holes and check for little dents and imperfections, because until we make the wall surface perfect, there's no sense adding paint. Paint only puts lipstick on the pig. And if you don't want to be painting a pig, fix the wall. Here's the secret. I've seen a lot of different things from done from a lot of different people. Um, there we go, classic damage, right? I'm just wiping it with my hand. The 5-in-1 tool. This is used to clean a brush. This is used like a screwdriver. This is a scraper. This is designed to dent. It's like, like a little mini hammer. The drywall is generally pretty soft, so what you do is you press that into the hole and you give it a turn like that and you create a nice big dent. And you'll see it because it actually marks the paper. All right. Every time you see a nail hole, you want to do a dent like this does two things. It creates a void that needs to be filled, which is really easy to do with the drywall compound. Most holes where you stick a nail in, the surface explodes a little bit as well. So if you just pull the nail out and, and then wipe it down or, or try to fill that, you have little bumps everywhere, okay? And it doesn't fill well. So just give it a bit of a turn. If there's four or five of them, do four or five times. This is not about speed, this is about perfection. Okay, once you've prepped your surface and you've done it right the first time, when you paint these walls, they're gonna come out absolutely gorgeous, brand new, darling. Now here's my next secret. When you're 
repairing drywall surfaces. There's a ton of products on the market that are like, use this to fix your holes. <laughs> Most of them are junk because they shrink when they dry or they flash when you paint them, which means that you put that compound on and you sand it and then you paint two coats and you come back a couple days later and in certain lights you can still see the patch shining through the paint. It's called flashing. Now, a little bucket of some pink stuff that turns white for you, it'll work, but you gotta add an extra step of painting to prime those patches, which is a real frustration. If you're trying to get something done in a hurry, the last thing you want is three layers of paint that has to dry. That's just nuts. So what you want to do is grab your Sheetrock 45 and you can buy this in little mini bags. I just wanted to point out, um, kind of like a large Ziploc bag size for just a few bucks. Okay, now we don't need much here. I got enough here to probably patch the entire room, but it's just easier to work with. Now, put it on your hawk, take your finger, create a volcano. Okay, ta-da. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one part water and then three parts powder. And this takes a little bit of practice to get this fit, right? Okay. And this is gonna be like a time-lapse video because this takes a couple minutes, okay? Basically what's going on here, the water is absorbing into all of the mud around that volcano, okay? And what you can do to help speed it up is just steal a little bit and spread it over like a top dressing. All right. And you're creating your own drywall compound here. And the reason you want to do it this way and not with the spackling that they sell in the store is the following. This stuff, when you put it on, doesn't need to be primed. This is an industry secret. <laughs> We use Sheetrock 45 to patch our stuff because we can patch it and I can even, if I'm in a hurry, I can use warm water. I can throw a little bit of salt in here because as soon as I add salt to the water, it changes the compound of the water and it incre increases the speed of the chemical reaction of the drying process. Okay, if anybody who's ever mixed this stuff out in the country on well water, you'll know you got a little bit of extra iron in there. My God, this stuff goes from Sheetrock 45 to Sheetrock four and a half minutes. <laughs> you got to use it in a hurry. And you just add a little bit more water until you got it working the way you want it to. Now, I got a really thick paste here right now. That's a little bit too thick for me. So, it's just so I don't make a mess, I'm just going to add a little bit more water. And I'm just going to force it through. There we go. Now it's loosening up. Let's get all the powder in there. Now, the thicker you make this, the faster it'll dry. However, it'll probably leave air holes because you can't really mix it up very well. So that's looking pretty good. We're gonna have a little bit more water. Okay. Because the drip's in there. There we go, now that's more of a wet paste. That's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for. That's more of a toothpaste consistency, okay. Now, if you're not really good with a hawk and a four inch knife, you can always use a paint mixing blade and a pail. Make a little bit more than you need. That whole bag, it's 20 kilos of powder and it costs $9. I'm telling you right now, you can afford to throw a little in the garbage. So you want this to be nice and creamy like toothpaste, okay? But it won't fall off the hawk and make a mess, all right? If it's runny, you've got too much water, add a little more powder, all right? Now, the secret is just work with a little bit. Now, I always set my hawk up when I'm doing a room. I got good mud on one side, and I got room to clean my knife off the other side with all the little chunks that may have come off with paint and, and chunks of dirt. So you watch, we'll take this, go into that little hole, and that's it. Filled, done. Okay, remember I'm filling a little dent. So I'm putting more than I need. I go almost, screw, screw, almost perpendicular to the wall, finished. Okay, this will revolutionize your life. Uh-huh. So here's the secret, done, no sanding. Clean off your knife on another side if you think you have any paint chips and stuff because you don't want to be dragging dirt through your mud. And then just go over there, double check your wall surface, there might be any other imperfections. There's a little dent down there. Okay, a little hole there, one there. 
You'd be surprised, just the process of living in a house, moving furniture, maybe your corners aren't perfect, you want to make them perfect, and you can just run it right down the whole corner. All right, straighten that all out. That'll clean up your corner for you. Looks like somebody had one of those wallpaper protectors on this corner at one point. Look at all the mud that filled in there. That's very crazy. Well, I can't do a really nice paint edge if I don't have a nice wall to work with. So I'm going to fix the corner first. Here we go. Off the side of the knife. Bit of an angle. Done. Corner. So now that we've patched all of our wall up, I'm going to go around and do the rest of the room. By the time I'm finished removing and patching the rest of this room, this will be dry and I can start painting. So remember, I'm going to remove the whole process of priming from the equation and I'm going to take a little extra time to make it perfect, but I'm not going to stop moving. So I do one full cycle through the room, boom, right into the cutting and then right into the rolling. Three hours in and done an entire living room. That's what painting is all about. All right, so it's time to sand. It's been about 45 minutes. Everything is nice and solid and white. I've also got a little smooth edge action going on up top because, you know, I mean, you got an opportunity to make something sexy, you'd take it. Um, what we're gonna do is just remember, we're painting a wall. So your process for the room is prep everything in the room, and then you wanna sand, paint, sand, and paint again, all right? And the key, and the reason why I love this 45 minute mud is because when I apply that, I don't have to walk around with a sanding block and sand every little spot. Forget that, because you're going to sand the whole wall, right? Use your radius 360, quick scuff. This takes off all the extra ridges and dirt that was painted in the last time. And you know it will be, because anybody who paints around their fixtures and their plugs and switches doesn't sand in between coats either. You can't be that lazy <laughs> and get a good job. There we go. Now. Because we did a little extra work on this corner, we're going to use the hand test. Just feel for any ridges. You might not see it. Outside corners can be a little bit picky because they usually have that curve. And my sand radius 360, even though it has a, a sanding sponge on it, sometimes doesn't do a great job there. So keep that handy to double check. But now we're ready to go. Okay, time for the first coat. So without wasting a whole lot of time, let's just go through the basics. Of course, um, my slang might be a little bit different because where I'm from, but uh, we call this a cage. <laughs> this is called a sleeve. Generally speaking, for walls, I like a, a 13 to 15 mil sleeve. Um, the better painter you are, the thicker you can go. And some jobs I'll even go up to a 20, depending on the quality of the paint. But that just slides right on there. This particular cage is awesome because it has a ball bearing construction. So it generally has a really nice flow and it does an amazing job. Try to make sure you wash your sleeves before you use them. This is a little known fact, but even the, the packages that say lint free, or they make these crazy claims that they're not gonna leave the little hairs on the wall, they're all full of garbage. They all have lint problems. So you gotta wash it first, get it under running water, use your 5-1 tool, and just give it a quick little scrape, spin it dry, and then it's ready to be used. Or, when you're done painting today, <laughs> wash it and put it in storage for the next time, then it's all ready to go. One of these things will usually do thousands and thousands of square feet of wall. If you take care of it, they'll last a long time, so it can be worth the seven or eight dollar investment. Next, you need a paint stick. Now, um, mine's obviously been used a little bit, but I love this because it has a locking system, okay? So I don't always have to be sitting here with the compression to tighten it up. It also has a locking pin. It's adaptable with this handle. So when I'm rolling, I don't have my handle and my cage undoing each other and getting all kind of wonky lines and causing drips. So it's fabulous. I work with lots of control. Next thing you need is a brush. Now I'm going to teach you today. It's a three inch angle brush. It's not square. It's got an angle. This is the one that I like to use. Um, I'm going to teach this technique today so that you can cut really quick and you can cut like a pro by the time I'm done showing this. And the way we do this is simple. You put some paint in your tray. Take some paint into an empty can, put about an inch of paint in there. Okay. La -da -dee -da -dee. Now, the reason I'm gonna suggest that is because you cannot paint 
out of a full can of paint. If you try to brush out of that full paint, can of paint, you're going to get paint everywhere. Your brush will have too much paint on it. Your floors will have too much paint on it. So just stop. Get an empty can. It's like three bucks. Always work with an empty can, okay? This brush is a three inch brush. I buy them at the Dulux store. They're awesome, okay? They're like 13 or 15 bucks. You can go to the hardware store and buy a brush if you want, but you're gonna pay way too much for it. So go down to the professional store, ask them for a regular three inch angle brush, pay a decent buck for it, and you're gonna get great results. What I do is I'm pushing it right into the bottom, okay? And you can see, now it's full of paint. All right, that is a paintbrush. If you try painting with that, you're gonna make a heck of a mess. So scrape off all four sides, okay? Now my brush is clean and it's still full of paint. Now watch this. I wanna paint with the paint from inside the brush so that I'm not causing any other problems. There's so much paint here, it's not even funny, all right? I mean, I can paint probably 15 or 20 linear feet of line with this one brush. And when you're painting, you basically you want to get going. There's so much paint there, you got to spread it around, okay? Here, I'm just going to take this off of the right way here. We're going to go without heat for the next few minutes, gentlemen, but we'll survive. It's for the greater good. <laughs> here we go, all right? And this is why you want to get all the things off the wall so that you can actually have some control and you're not leaving big drips everywhere. All right. Let's just recap a little bit because when you're painting, you want to cut and then roll on the first coat and second coat. You can go backwards on the first coat, but it's just better to have a process because you can cut and roll. By the time you're done the room, you're ready to do the next coat. Remember, just sand in between the coats. But here we go. We're going to fill our brush. We're going to clean our brush off. Now, this ceiling here is still drying and I don't care because I'm not going to cut right into the ceiling edge. I'm just going to put the heel of the brush down, push the bristles out, and then run my brush within an eighth of an inch of the ceiling. That's the first cut. Okay. And then I'm just going to feather it all out. All right. Now that is cutting 101. On the second pass or the second coat, then I'm going to go right into the ceiling. Now here, Max, I'll just do this. Again, we'll press the heel, push the bristle, and look at the paint line. The paint is not pushing up to the extent of the bristle. You see that? The bristle is touching the ceiling, but the paint is coming from inside the brush. So it's about an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch off. And that, and as soon as I get that snowplow effect, you see that little ridge? I pull away, clean the brush, and I go back and I pick up the extra paint. I don't want the extra paint on there, all right? That extra paint right now is your enemy, not your friend. There you go, boom. Now the second time you come here, it'll be so easy to pass that brush because this is a nice fresh painted surface. And you're just gonna push that bristle right up into the ceiling like this and then pull. But we'll demonstrate that later. Okay, so that was the top edge. Inside corner, there's two kinds. If you're doing an accent wall, then you want to cut the inside corner the same way. Put the heel here, push the, the tip of the brush towards the corner, and then come down and leave just a little bit of an edge, okay? First coat. Second coat, you can get a lot closer, but for now we're just trying to get really close without going over the line. If you get too aggressive, you're gonna go over the line. Oh, now you gotta come back with the other paint, blah, blah, blah. So you don't wanna do that. Here we go. Every time I do this, I'm gonna push the paint in, I'm gonna clean the brush off, if you're doing the whole room, it's a lot simpler. You just run down, up and down both sides, okay? And you're looking for about a two inch wide piece here so that when you're rolling your walls, you don't have to roll right into the corner. And the reason you don't want that is because when you're rolling here, the side of the roller, the cage, it's gonna rub across here. And one, of the, one side or the other is gonna get damaged. And it's gonna make a hack of a mess. So get in the habit of brushing out the inside corners. Don't rely on the roller to do that work for you. Now the next technique you're going to want to have is for brushing out the outside corner. Now in this situation we're going to have two different colors. All right, This is why I want to show this to you because whenever you're doing two different colors, the last thing you want to do is use the roller on the outside edge. Because those bristle marks are always going to kind of curl around and you're going to get little fuzzy lines. All right, 
The way you get a nice sharp line was A, use that 45 minute compound we talked about and run up against the edge. Make sure you're filling all the little dings and nicks and scratches. And then what you do is you set the heel of your brush again, okay? And you come down like you're cutting the ceiling. Leave that 16th of an inch or that eighth of an inch line, okay, on your first coat. And wait until you got it there. Now, now we're gonna do a little pulling away. And we're gonna brush that paint to that edge. The secret here is the heel of the brush can't extend past the corner or the bristles will come off and go fire across. So this way the bristles are actually being lifted off at the edge. And that keeps your corner nice and straight. When I'm done with the lighter color paint two coats, I'll do one more coat on the darker color paint and I'll do the same thing and I'll run down the edge. And what'll end up happening is this paint will create a nice straight line and you'll be able to just be able to show off to all your friends how straight your lines are with that one technique. Wow, you know, by the way, that smooth edge is looking pretty sexy. If you like that, you can check out our video on how to do a smooth edge on your ceiling. <laughs> okay, so now here we are at the base. This is the, or the fourth side of the wall that we have to paint up. We're cutting in, and you've got two choices here. If your baseboards are in fabulous condition, and the reason we do this last is because you always want to see your cut line. If your paint baseboards are in rough shape like this and they're going to need another coat, then you just, just brush them in. If your color is a light color like this, just go ahead and paint the whole bloody thing. Who cares? Make it quick. Get a nice line there. Make sure your caulking is covered in that wet paint. And then when you're done, we can come back with the baseboard paint and we can cut a nice line. Because your, your eyesight, you're sitting right on top of it. It's perfect. But if you want to maintain and not go through the extra work and not tape it off, treat it the same way, but you got to get low. Okay, you got to be underneath your brush. Again, start with the heel. Come up to about an eighth of an inch, just like the first coat up top. And the reason you can get away with this is because generally today the paint is made with so many components from your chemistry set that you get great coverage. In a lot of cases, just one coat. We still paint two coats just to guarantee our texture. And we don't have any flashing from primers and little dull spots. But in most cases, one coat is enough. Now the second coat you can come by later and you can get nice and tight and draw that perfect straight line. And the reason you can draw a straight line is because you're painting from inside the brush. Remember, you push the bristle right to the point where you want to draw a line and you pull. And the paint comes out from inside the brush and the outside of the brush is now your guide. So wherever you push your bristles to will be the guide and you can just draw a straight line from inside the brush, okay? That's the secret. If you just practice this for a few minutes, you'll never use tape to cut off anything ever again. You'll just be cutting like a pro. So when we're loading up our roller, well really what we're doing is loading up the roller. You want to fill it full of paint and you want to just run it like this and get the extra off the top. That's what all of that design the pan is for, is to clean extra paint off the top of the roller, okay? I like to personally paint from floor to ceiling. I've seen so many pictures and diagrams, even professional paint companies in their pictures, they've always got somebody holding the roller by hand and they're sweating it out. That is a workout. If you are sitting here holding your roller by hand, you'll not even get through the whole room without needing to take a break. Do one of these bad boys, all right? Step back from your wall. Comfortable, you should be able to hit the ceiling and the floor. Shouldn't have to bend over. Shouldn't have to lean, shouldn't have to strain, all right? What you do is you start about a foot from the top because there's a lot of paint on that roller and you just gently let it roll down the wall. No pressure, okay? And then you're starting to add a little bit of pressure going back up. You're going two rollers wide the first coat, draw a straight line, and then work your way back. You're gonna pick up all the extra paint from the first run, push it back towards the corner, go to about an inch or so, and because you have all this control with the locking system with the cage and the handle, you can go extremely quickly. So here we're going to load this up and we're going to clean it a little bit. Don't be too aggressive here. You might throw paint all over the room. But again, step back where you're comfortable. Start from about a foot down. Okay. See that gap? Slowly add a bit of pressure. Now work your roller backwards. Back it up until you're overlapping. 
All right, now we're using a little bit of pressure, but because it's two hands, the pressure is convenient. I'm not gonna hit a ceiling because I'm extended here with my back straight. I'm extended here with my back straight, okay? You see the, the body motion here. This is ergonomic painting. This is not gonna fatigue you. You're gonna get a perfect roll, no drips, perfect coverage, no sore back. All right, painting can be a really difficult job. It can take a lot of energy or it can be a lot of fun. Now you'll notice that when I'm rolling, I'm going from right to left. It's because the cage is pointed that direction, okay? Wherever this, the metal rod enters into your sleeve, that should be on your leading edge. When you're putting pressure, the pressure is greater here and it's reduced down through the sleeve because that's the first point of contact off the fulcrum. So when you get near these fixtures, flip it around, gently roll that smooth because you're going to get a little bit of dripping, okay? And you don't want to be bumping into things with the edge of that metal. This lets you get nice and close and you can just get right in there close and personal to texturize that paint because you want to get that eggshell finish, right? Don't trust the brush to be the texture. Use your roller and then you can load up and finish your wall. Now, we only have one pass here, so I don't want to put too much paint on. I want to be a little bit careful here. Now remember, when you get to the outside corner, it's a drywall corner, so the corner bead is going to be a little scoop. So turn this around and put your pressure point on the flat part of the wall because this will be a lot more forgiving for you. All right, and you're going to be less likely to create a drip when you get near the edge. Okay, again, you want to put texture on that and you want to have all that control, get within a half an inch or so of the corner just to texturize that paint before it's dry. There we go. And then I'm going to get nice and close to the fixtures over here. There we are. So for the purpose of our video here today, we're not painting the whole room. We're just doing a demonstration. Uh, actually, the homeowner is over here in the corner watching us do this. She's learning her tips and tricks. It's her job to paint the house, so we're just going to give her the demonstration. We're going to go for coffee break now. Whenever you're taking a break, load your brush up, okay? Set it in your can, all right? Same with the roller. If you load it up and fill it full of moisture, you're going to be okay to go and take a break. You might even want to just take it off of that so that you don't have an accident, okay? We'll come back in about 20 minutes. This paint will be dry, enough to do the sanding in the second coat. I know that sounds really quick, but again, it's 100% acrylic paint. These things dry really fast. You'll notice that there's just a little bit of a dark spot here where we filled in the holes with the 45 minute mud. After this coat is dry, that'll be the end of the flashing. So we didn't have to prime. This is a super fast way to paint your house. Okay, so, yep, first coat's dry. It takes about 20 minutes. Now we're gonna do second coat. Now, just before I get started, I wanna tell you, if this is brand new drywall or it's a previously painted wall, it's the same process. This is why I love this technique, because you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If this is brand new drywall, the reason we stop short is because you wanna have a layer of paint there to glide the brush on, to have all that control for drawing your line later. And if it's a previously painted surface, it doesn't change your technique. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, okay? So here we go. Ah, <sighs> no pressure, eh? Draw a straight line. Drop the heel on there, okay? Paint from inside. Now you're gonna push the bristle right up into the ceiling. And you're gonna paint from inside the brush and you're gonna use the bris bristles up against the ceiling like your guide, okay? Go back and pick that up. There we go. So Max was just telling me that his house, when he was painting, he painted up near the ceiling and the corners started to peel off, the drywall tape. And I laughed and I said, what uh, year was your house built, about 82? And he's like, yeah, as a matter of fact it was. And I said, well, there you go. Back in 1982, our leading drywall compound company in the area that supplies most of the stores had a huge batch that failed mud and they didn't find out about it until about 10 years later. So there are thousands of homes built in the early 80s that have got all the drywall paper tape coming off with a little bit of humidity. So if you don't have air conditioning, or if you all of a sudden decide to paint your whole house and you add all that moisture into the room, bloop, all your tape falls off. What a disaster. 
That's a real good reason to know how to install crown. And you can check that out on one of our crown videos. So now we got an imperfect wall on a brand new imperfect smooth edge, but it's painted perfectly. That looks phenomenal. So you're going to find that the second coat, you just push the bristle up and pull. When you get good at this, you can pull a really nice long section with one time. You should be able to paint about three to four feet with a full brush. And I'm finding that one dab is usually enough to get the kind of paint that I want on there. My biggest problem here is I'm finding that there's a little bit of the old green popping through. What a mess. I'm going to do a little bit of touch up on that smooth edge later and add some mud and cover up that old paint. Again, same kind of thing here for those corners. Make sure your brush is dry and the heel is on the right side. Just paint a big circle. Get all the brush paint out of the brush before you start to do your detailed cut line around your fixtures. All right, finish with nice big swirls so you don't get any paint gathered up and bubbling. You don't get those lines. The biggest enemy with a paintbrush is using too much paint and then you leave lines in the wall. Funny thing is, is I learned how to paint back when I first moved to Ottawa about 15 years ago. And I thought I knew how to paint. So I went for a job and the guy says, do you know how to cut? And I was like, listen, <laughs> I know how to paint. I don't know if I can make you any money, but I know how to paint. And he goes, that's the most honest answer I've ever heard in my life. So he let me get on the crew. And within about 15 minutes of watching this guy paint a wall, I realized I didn't have a damn clue what I was doing. They put me on the roller and he would just start cutting. And my God, he was so fast with that paintbrush. It was just embarrassing. I couldn't roll the wall as fast as he could cut it. And that became my job to catch up. <laughs> He'd be taking breaks and I'd still be rolling the room. And it took me about three months to get fast enough with the roller to keep up with him. It took me about another probably five or six months before they even let me touch a brush. And remember, I knew how to paint. <laughs> yeah, if I had a dollar for everybody, every time someone said I know how to paint. Painting is as much about speed as it is accuracy. Now, if you're painting your house, speed really isn't your concern, right? But at the same time, you don't want to take all day long to paint your house. So getting a technique that'll work really well for you in a short amount of time is worth its weight in gold. Okay, now that that second cut is done, it's time for the second roll. Now remember, the second roll, we have our paint here which is dry over all our little patches. That becomes the primer sealer for those patches. The technology in the paint is what we're going to rely on here so that our second coat, there's no more flashing. We also don't need much paint. So, where I used to go two rollers wide, now I'm going to go three. And what this does is it forces my, my sleeve that's on the cage to really put texture in the wall. I'm not anywhere on this wall do I have too much paint where I can't get a good texture. I got a nice bristle lifting the paint off the surface here now. And that's going to be where my texture comes from. And then when you're done your wall, follow your cage, back roll right to the very beginning. That is going to be a smooth, sexy finish. So when you're all done, you want to take your sleeve off your cage. And here's what's important. The cage, if it's sitting in the roller, if you store it like this in the bottom of your pan, your cage is going to get full of paint eventually. And you're not going to be able to get it off there. It's going to affect its performance. And what's even worse, it'll develop this squeak around the ball bearings. It drives you crazy. So when you're done, take your handle and that'll separate the sleeve from the cage. Nice and controlled and you don't have to get covered in paint. There you go. You just lay it down and you got to wash this up. Okay, there we go. Now the only thing left to do is to wait about another 20 minutes. When this coat is dry, we're going to come back, we're going to cut the baseboard for you 
and show you how to draw a beautiful line with your trim paint without using any tape. So the last step is to paint the trim on the baseboard. Now, oddly enough in this video I didn't show you, but when I'm painting my trim, my step process for a room is actually to paint the casing on the doors and windows first, and I paint the baseboard last. And that's because it's easier to cut the wall against window and door trim, and then do the walls, because here, this one, you want to do the trim last for this reason. My eyes have to see what I'm doing. <laughs> so I don't want to be crawling underneath my brush trying to do this. I'm painting that wall last. So what I do is I'll set this on my quarter round. Same thing, we're going to paint from inside the brush. And we're going to draw our line about an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch off the bottom of that trim. Don't pay any attention to the flooring. Just draw your line with your brush off the edge of that trim. And that's it. Now, the reason we're doing it this way, instead of trying to paint the entire piece of trim, A, gravity will have an effect on this paint. And before it gets a chance to dry, it's probably going to pull it a little bit further down the trim. B, when you're standing up looking at the trim, you will never ever see that it is painted just a little bit shy of that floor. Not in a million years. Okay? So don't be too hard on yourself judging your work when you're crawling around on the ground. Then we're going to do this. Heel, place your brush, place the bristles in that crack, and pull. Painting that edge from inside the brush. We start to see it running out. Go back and pull it again. That's it. Don't go over and over and over again. You'll end up creating a snowplow effect. Push the heel in and draw your line. Okay, one pull and that's it. Now the better you get at this, the more brush you can put in contact with that gap, the longer the stroke. But the idea is draw that line with the bristle, pull it and that's it. Okay, then come back into the middle and fill the rest of your base. Okay, and when you're dealing with the outside corners, once you've got that done there like that, go around the corner from the back side and just lift off any drippage. Now this particular paint that the clients purchased, I find is extremely wet. <laughs> I like my semi-gloss a little thicker, control easier, but <laughs> At the end of the day, no matter what paint or what brush you're using, it's all about painting from inside the brush, and then you can draw a line. No tape necessary. And you might be saying, oh, Jeff, yes, but you've been practicing for years. You've got a steady hand like a surgeon. I can't paint like that. Ready for this? Backwards, left-handed. Not because I'm good, but because the technique works. Put the bristle where it needs to go. Pull. It's all about the technique, not about the painter. Just to prove it, I'll do the last one. With a lot of movement in my hand. Still a straight line because the bristles are not doing the painting. It's from the inside of the brush, okay? And if you don't believe me, try it yourself. You'll be surprised. Painting from inside the brush and not the outside of the brush will make anybody paint like a pro. Okay, so there's my system for painting like a pro. Throw the tape out, okay? Paint from inside the brush, spend three bucks on a can. When you're done with it, pour the paint back in its original container and clean it out so you're ready for the next time. But this system allows you to get a perfect line from start to finish, no tape. Because remember, when you tape, when you don't know you have a problem until you pull the tape off. Well, you're supposed to be finished by then, not going back to patching and priming and starting all over for touch-ups. This system allows you to do two coats in a room, plus your trim, all within about two and a half to three hours. That includes taking off and reinstalling all of the plates and doing all your touch-ups, repairing your holes, I'm telling you. You can do two rooms a day on the weekend. You can paint most of your house in one weekend using this technique and not have to overexert yourself to do it, okay? Hope this helps. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. 
I'll be there to help answer them. I know not everybody paints the same. There's more than one way to paint right, but this technique works. It's easy to learn and it'll give you a professional result. It may not be the world's greatest painting technique, but it is definitely an amazing technique for homeowners like you, okay? So like this video if you like it, we're gonna see you in the next video.